Good afternoon, everybody. Hello, St. Tammany family. Hello, everybody um, in the community and beyond. Welcome to another uh, short little art lesson from me, Rachel Walker. I'm here today to talk to you a little bit more about symmetry. If you missed my previous video about symmetry, go back to that one, start there, and then join me back over at this a little bit more advanced video about symmetry. Like we said in the, talked about in the last video, symmetry is when an object, a piece of art, a shape is the same on both sides. So when we look at this painting by Van Gogh, it's a very famous still life by Van Gogh, and you can look at the vase and see that the vase is the same on both sides. Now, when you look at the flowers, if you draw a line right down the middle of the flowers, they're definitely not the same on both sides, but that's okay, because it makes the artwork more unique. Today, we're I'm gonna show you a nice trick to creating a nice, even, smooth, symmetrical vase. We're gonna add it to a table, and we're also gonna be drawing some flowers with a setup that is not symmetrical. When you um, create artwork that is not the same on both sides, we would call that asymmetry, or this artwork, flowers are asymmetrical. So there's another little word to add to your vocabulary. So. Like I said, this is by Van Gogh. He's very famous for his um, flower still lifes. We are not gonna do sunflowers for our art today. It's spring, the tulips are blooming. I know everybody's wishing they can get out and see some of those types of flowers. So we're gonna do tulips today inside of our vase instead of sunflowers. So, like I promised, I am gonna show you a quick, another quick symmetry tip. But before we do that, let's talk about what we need. We need two pieces of paper. Okay, this is a, Thin printer paper, this is a little bit thicker cardstock. I'm gonna paint on the cardstock and I'm gonna cut out my vase with the copy paper. Like I said in previous videos, you do not need fancy paper to do these projects. We're gonna draw in crayons today. If you would like to draw in pencil, that's fine. Like I tell my students, let's be brave, let's draw in crayon, it's just one less step. You also need glue, scissors, paint and paintbrush, water, paper towel. Let's move all that to the side for now. And let's do our first step, our vase. Like I said, we're gonna make it symmetrical. So here is my tip for you, okay? So we're gonna fold it in half, just like we started the other video, <clears throat> okay? And I'm gonna flip it to where the fold, oops, sorry. The fold is on the left side, okay? It's open on the right side. Got it? Fold is left, open on the right. I'd like you to pick any color crayon you want, okay? We're gonna draw a vase in this area. We don't want it to be huge. We don't want it to be the whole paper because we still wanna be able to have room on our actual background paper to make our, our flowers. So I'm gonna say maybe about half, half the amount of height right here, maybe even a little bit more that's a good size for your base, okay? So what I'm gonna do, let's put our crayon at the top of the fold and move down a little bit. Maybe that would be moved down halfway. Maybe I'm gonna scoot up a little bit above halfway. So crayon at the top, scoot down a little bit. All right, so maybe you wanna pause this right now with your parents and you want to look up different types of vase, vase shapes on the internet, go for it. Your vase does not need to look like mine. It does not have to be the same shape. It could be more complicated. It could be more simple. I'm just gonna draw a simple, smooth vase shape that will be um, easy for us to show symmetry with. Okay, you ready? Hey, and since we're doing this on thin copy paper, if you mess up, try again, okay? All right, I'm gonna make a horizontal line that goes out about half the width of the paper. Diagonal line that goes back in, <clears throat> not all the way in. And then I'm gonna, if you watch my crayon, I'm gonna curve out and then back in, almost like I'm doing a backwards letter C, okay? Curve out, back in, okay? Now from here, maybe you wanna just curve it back in and make it simple. Maybe you wanna follow along with me and do a little bit extra on the bottom of my face. I'm gonna curve out, then back in. Okay, 
Okay, or if you didn't want to do that little last complicated step, just draw a little curve right there, and that's good. Okay, you ready? Now, here's the next step. Hold it tight, okay? You're gonna take your scissors. You might need help from your parents, and that's totally fine. You're gonna cut on the line. Don't cut off the line. You're gonna cut next to the line. beautiful full vase it's symmetrical same on both sides let's say you open it up and you're thinking it looks a little different you're not liking it maybe it's too big maybe it's too small it's okay try it again I'm gonna test it out I'm gonna put my per my second paper vertical I'm gonna place it on my paper I'm thinking it looks great okay so you just figure out what what's best for your artwork and then go from there okay you ready here we go now I'm gonna move this out of the way again. And I want to create the same blue line on the other side. All right. Now we're gonna come back to adding details to this in just a little while. Okay, so move to the side. Put your um, second paper that's ready for your work of art down, okay? And now I'm gonna to switch to a new color, okay? Hmm, let's see. I'm gonna to switch to green, maybe a red, okay. All right, I'm gonna work on my table next. We're gonna do, so we have our vase done. Now we're gonna do our table and move on to our flowers, okay? All right, I'm just gonna draw a horizontal line across for my table. Done, simple, right? Okay, now I'm gonna put my vase back down, okay? And I'm going to get a green, okay? And I want to scoot it down a little bit more, okay? Now. I want to make a line to help me know where I'm going to, um, where I need to make my flowers appear like they're coming out of the vase. Okay, so this is the width of where the, the flowers would be coming out of the vase. So I'm going to make a little line right here with green. I'm not tracing it. I'm going to stop. See what that looks like. So that way when I draw my stems, I know where they need to go. I know where they're they, where they need to be coming from. That's a little trick, another little trick for this project to be successful. Okay, so we have our table line, and then we have our green line to help us with our stems. Okay, we're gonna do our stems first, and then our flowers. Okay, like I said before, with Van Gogh's flowers are not even on both sides. Okay, so maybe I'll do two flowers on this side, two on this side, maybe one on this side, or maybe three over here, two over here. It's up to you, okay? We're gonna do tulips, but first let's do the stems. So I'm gonna start from my line that I just drew. Curve out, okay? Curve out, okay? Curve up. Curve up. Maybe this guy's shorter. Maybe this one over here is really curving. And maybe this guy is just way shorter than everybody. So as you can see, they're definitely not symmetrical, okay? We're gonna go back once our flowers are done and do leaves, okay? All right, all your flowers can be the same color. They can be different colors. I'm gonna pick a pink, orange, Yellow, so your crayons even can be broken and it'll work just fine. And then maybe a second pink, and then I'm gonna do a purple. Okay, here we go. Let's 
start with one with a lot of space, okay? Can you draw the letter U? That is all we need to know how to do to get a nice tulip shape, okay? Put it right here. Whoop, it broke. U, okay? And I made sure the bottom of the U became friends with the end of the leaf, okay? Now from the U, curve down, curve down. Do another curve, curve, curve. Almost like you're drawing little hills, okay? Tulip number one, yay. All right, I'm switching to pink. Let's twist, um, let's slant the paper a little bit because this guy's it's going sideways. Letter U. Okay, they all can be different sizes too. Curve down, curve down. Remember, you're making little hills. Curve down, curve down, okay? I'm gonna switch to yellow. U, curve down, curve down. Maybe this one's a little more simple and you, and you can't see all the different petals. Maybe this one just has three petals that you can see for a little more variety, okay? I'm gonna do orange over here. Maybe this one is a little bit smaller. It hasn't bloomed all the way. So I'm gonna do a smaller U, okay? Curve down, down, curve. That one's a little tighter, okay? All right, last pink. I'm gonna do a wild one. Maybe one that's a little bit blooming a little bit more. You ready? I'm gonna do a U, but almost like a curve U. Maybe this guy needs to go up the page a little bit. See? It's looking a little wild, I love it. Okay, they're all a little different, just like actual flowers, okay? All right. So for this one, I did a U, but one side of the U curves out a little bit, okay? Looks kind of like it's gonna be a wave. All right, I think it's looking good. All right, now we need our green again, and we're gonna do the leaves. Leaves of tulips are long, thin, pointy, also curved. So let's start back with this tulip. I'm gonna curve out, way curve, way down. Way, curved it a lot is what I'm trying to say. Curve it another time. Look at that. All right, you ready for the next challenge? Let's make this leaf go behind this stem. We're gonna overlap, okay? Oh no, I ran into the stem. Skip it, keep going and stop. Let's go back down. Oh no, stem, skip it, go back down. How cool does that look? That's called overlapping gonna make it look more realistic. Let's do it again. Curve it, stem, skip it. Okay, let's go back down. Stem, skip it. Oh, I ran into another stem. So just stop, okay? Let's do one that's going down here. Oh no, flower, skip it. Keep going. All right, I think that looks good. I don't think I need any more, okay? Now, let's put our vase back on and see how it's looking. <gasps> Look how good it looks. It's looking great. Now, from here, maybe you don't wanna use paints. Maybe you just wanna do crayon, that's fine. Fill it up with all the crayon decorations you want. But before I paint, I'm gonna add a pattern to my vase, okay? I'm gonna do a blue pattern on my vase. Maybe you've seen white vases with blue patterns on them. Um, you can definitely uh, look up some vase pattern ideas with your parents on the internet. Um, you can pause the video right now and look up some pattern ideas. Or maybe you just want to be creative, not overthink it. Don't worry about a plan. And maybe you just want to be brave and get started. Well, it broke. That's totally fine. I can handle a little crown.
All right, what do you think? Done? I could definitely take some more time and make it a, a little bit more detailed, but for the sake of the length of the video, I'm gonna move on, okay? All right, look how nice that's looking, okay? All right, I'm gonna paint my vase first. Why do you think I need to paint these two separate? Because if I glued my vase down right now and then painted wet on top of it, the glue would not dry properly and it would fall apart. So I'm gonna paint my vase first. If you are painting on a table, and you need a little protection, put a paper towel or another paper behind it. All right, now, from here on, I really, I'm setting you free besides the um, part about when we assemble it, okay? So if you want to just paint along with me, go for it, okay? I'm going to pick a, hmm, what would be a cool color? Maybe yellow. I'm gonna pick a yellow color. And the crayon should repel the paint, like we said in the um, the first cake video. Pastels and crayons are are oil based, and oil and water do not mix. That's all science fact for you. So that's pretty neat. Just like in the cake video, I'm gonna remember about lights and darks, shadows and highlights, making things more unique looking. Okay. So on this side, yeah, look, I got it all in the paper because that's in my classroom. If you are my, one of my art students, you know what we call it. What do we call it? Protector paper. We have a protector paper underneath. So that way it's okay if we get a mess on the table because it's on the paper instead. All right, so now I'm just gonna take water, blend all that yellow in. I'm going much faster than you should be, by the way. I'm going fast because I'm trying to show you. So I've got it brighter in the middle, whiter, lighter to less paint in the middle. And then I've got more yellow around the outside, bottom, where there would be more shadow in real life. Okay. Well, I'm loving that. I think that looks really good. Okay. Love it. Great. All right. I'm moving that guy to the side to dry. Table. Pick your table color. I'm gonna do a darker color since our tulips are gonna be so light, okay? Now I'm gonna do the blue really dark right in the middle underneath where the vase would be. Why? Because I bet this was in real life. The vase would be, oh no, I got a little spotter. Is that okay? Absolutely, just wipe it up. Do not be sad. We can paint over it. Call that use your mistakes. You can even, if, it, if you make a little splatter that shows on the wall or something, you can turn into a pattern, dots, lines, a shadow. All right. Maybe a little bit more blue. Now remember, I'm going kind of fast. So please feel free to pause this and slow down. Let me just give you a little preview. That's looking good, love it. So since I just checked it out, I'm seeing that I might need to do more blue coming out a little bit. Maybe on this side. Okay. Good, done, love it. Moving on. Now I'm then going to do the green stems and leaves, okay? Now, really have to pay attention because there's so many thin lines happening. You wanna make sure you know what you're painting, okay? And that it's not the background. So make sure you have the right size paintbrush. You don't want a giant one for these thin little shapes. All right. 
right, I'm almost there. Now, should we leave these stems plain, light green? Or do you think you want to challenge yourself and make them have a little shadow? I think we can challenge ourselves. I got a little bit of a darker green. And now if you don't have a darker green in your palette, just put a little blue on your brush. Watch, I'm going to put a little blue on my brush and I'll show you. Whoop. The blue mixes with the green and makes a dark green. A little more blue. So you don't even need multiple shades of green. You can just do a shadow with another color. I love it. Looking so good. All right. Now, tulips, light spring colors, okay? I'm going to do pink. What other color can I put with my pink tulips? I'm gonna dip it in my purple a little bit. A little purple shadow. Okay. Oh, that looks great. Okay, all right. Almost there. I'm going to do a little blue for my shadow. All right, almost there. Really red. A little purple shadow. All right, almost there. Yellow. What color should we do on the, as a shadow? I'm gonna do red to kind of tie in that red pattern, that red tulip. All right. We're so close to being done. Okay, now. I'm not gonna take a ton of time to paint the wall because I want you to have time. I, I want you to be able to watch this and kind of do your own thing. So I'm gonna pick a color I have not used yet, which is like an orange yellow color. I'm making it right now. Okay. And I'm going to start at the bottom with darker. And move up to the top with lighter orange. <clears throat> now remember, I'm going past Now I want to go really slow, a lot slower than what I'm doing. We want to go really slow around our tulips because we want those tulips to stay the right color.
I move my paper around a lot because that just gives me the best angle when painting, okay? All right, so as I finish up, I hope you are having the best time painting with me because I am really enjoying painting with you. Like I've mentioned before, I definitely miss my art students. I'm sure my art students are at home. I'm trying to think of things to keep them entertained and busy all day. So this is what these are for. Not only my art students that know me, know how I teach, but also for anybody in the community that would like to watch these, whether you're an adult, a teenager, a kindergartner, have fun. No matter what age you are, you are always an artist if you want to be. While you're home at um, at this time, remember my motto, use your mistakes, whether it's this art project or learning lessons with your parents. Just know that we're all in the same boat as you, trying to figure it all out. Mistakes are okay. All right, mine's kind of messy but I know you'll go slower and make yours even neater, okay? What happens when you start getting little balls of paper? That means your paper's too wet. All right, I'm cleaning it up a little bit. Now, you wanna put it to the side to dry for a little while, okay? You put it to the side to dry for a little while. So that way, you can take your vase. You're gonna put glue on the back of your vase. Okay, mine's still wet. You're gonna put glue on the back of your vase. Okay, when it's dry. And then you're going to glue it. Looks nice, right? Endless possibilities. I hope you enjoyed my still life video today showing symmetry as well as asymmetry inspired by Van Gogh's flowers and vases. You'll have a great rest of your day.